In today's video, I'll be looking at the old mercury thermostats. These thermostats you probably saw on your parents' house or your grandparents. I would say they'd be around 1980s and earlier. They worked on a very simple premise that a mercury switch would turn on and off your furnace based on the temperature. So on this thermostat, the lower meter was the controlling set point temperature and the upper meter was the actual ambient room temperature. You would just slide this little meter across until it went above the threshold and that would activate a switch which told your furnace to turn on. Yeah, I remember the days where I would go up and turn on the thermostat and then my mom or dad would go and promptly turn it down almost immediately. Brr. So we can have a closer look at the thermostat now. I'll just take the cover off and you can see there's not much to it. The slider switch is at the bottom there and it just pushes against a bimetal coil that's in the middle. That bimetal coil is attached to a mercury vial at the top and based on the temperature it'll either turn on or off based on the flow of the mercury because one of the components of mercury, one of its properties, is that it's conductive. We'll just mount it on a plate here so we can do some more testing. Want to make sure it's nice and level. Okay, so we can do a quick little test here. What I'll do is I'll move this set point until the little mercury bead moves over. And right there, it makes contact, telling the furnace to turn on. So that the furnace will turn on, it'll warm up. Now I can cheat a bit, I have a little heat gun here that I'll just turn on and we can see what happens. There you go. See how that coil's moving? Now it's getting hot. So now the heater is turned off and the house will slowly cool off and now you'll see the mercury bead slowly go back the other way as the bimetal coil contracts. I'll speed this up here so you can watch. So like I said back in the day, you only needed two wires on and off to uh, run your furnace. And that'd be these two wires here, W for white and R for red. So when it calls for heat, you're going to get a closed circuit condition, closed switch, continuity, furnace turns on and when the mercury switch falls open, it sends a shut off command to the furnace saying, turn off, I'm warm enough. Okay, so I've hooked up a couple of wires to the red and the white leads and I'm going to hook these to my multimeter here. So what I want to just test real quickly here is that when it calls for heat, it's going to create a closed circuit and continuity and that'll be the uh, indication to call for heat. And uh, just when I put these two together, it'll be the same thing. And you can hear continuity, closed circuit. Okay, so we'll hook up the leads here and we'll see what we hear when we get uh, a call for heat. Okay, I have my multimeter set up for continuity and I have it hooked up to the leads. So we should see a call for heat here as soon as it cools off a little bit. I brought an ice pack here with me. I'm just going to gently blow over the ice pack and onto the thermocouple, the bimetal coil, and we should see the mercury 
make contact and you'll hear a sound. Okay, let's try it out. There you have it. Now I'm gonna take my heat gun again and I'm gonna blow it right on there. And it shuts off right away. So of course nowadays, the uh, mercury switch is obsolete. No one wants to use heavy metals. People throw them out in the landfills and they can contaminate the land. If you do have one, take them to an electronics uh, recycle or take them to um, the fire station and they'll take it and dispose it accordingly. So there you have it. That's how an old mercury thermostat switch works. Of course, nowadays they have the electronic ones that are programmable and have a microprocessor inside. And of course, all the new age stuff here we have uh, microprocessor controlled programmable thermostats. This one I had in my place, I've actually upgraded this one because it's obsolete now to a touch screen and one that goes to my Wi-Fi and then there's an app on my phone I can use. So the uh, technology's really taken off. But you gotta see where we were in the past to where we're going in the future. So it's kind of neat to see the progression of technology. All right, well, let's, um, the tutorial is over on this, so I'm actually wanting to take this thing apart. So stick around and let's rip it apart and see what's in it. So one thing my friend over at the heating place was able to get for me was these big mercury switches here. They're not in their thermostats anymore. But you can see these are actually meant for heavy duty electronics and some high voltage applications perhaps. And you can see the mercury just fills the gap between the two contacts and create creates a uh, closed switch situation there. So yeah, here's another one I have that's slightly different in design. It's all based on one and it's rotating the capsule, but yeah, same concept. As the temperature changes, the bimetal strip will cause the glass capsule to rotate. And if this, of course, will cause the mercury to drop from one side to the other and into the on position. It completes the electrical circuit and it'll turn on your furnace or air conditioner. As we're moving into winter, I don't think we'll be using our air conditioner. So yeah, just looking at this bimetal strip here, you can kind of see it's coiled up. So there is some length to it. I'm not sure how to get it off of there. It looks like it might be riveted into place here. Maybe if I unclip that little thing there, it'll come out. We can maybe pull it off. So just looking in here, it looks like there's a little nut or something. So if I can loosen that off, maybe I can get the whole assembly off. Okay, I think I loosened it off here. So if we just pull that over. And little bits are falling off now. Ah, well, there we go. Still attached by the wires, which we can snip off now because we're not doing this anymore. So there, there's your bimetal strip here. So you can see if you if you were to take this and stretch it out from length to length it would be quite actually it would have some length to it let's find out okay we're going to start unraveling this be a little bit careful of the mercury here of course we don't want to break that rupture that vessel And we'll see what the total length is on this. There's writing on it too. And we'll see what that says after we're done here. OK. 
Okay. So we're reaching the end here. It just wraps around the base. And this is about the total length here. I'd say about 20, 25 centimeters maybe. So there's some of the writing on there. P675R-TM2. It looks to be the name and then it repeats. So it must be the type of alloy that this is. So if anybody knows what that means, maybe uh, let me know in the comments. I don't think it's worth anything, but uh, you never know. It served a purpose in a thermostat. Okay, so here's the glass capsule that had the mercury in there. I'm going to recover the mercury for my own collection and do some experiments later in later videos. You can make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of those. I plan on doing a lot more videos with uh, just working with the elements, collecting them, seeing what I can recover them from basic household items and maybe some not so basic household items, but we'll, we'll see about that in the future. So I'm just going to uh, pierce the uh, tip here. I've done this before. Be careful, it's, it is glass. I'm gonna get myself a little spill container just in case something does want to spill, but uh, we'll see uh, how much mercury is in there. I'll weigh it and then put it in my little uh, vial that I have other mercury in. Okay, I got my little container here, so we're just gonna put it into that uh, cap boat so we can weigh it up and see how much they put in here. Let's zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Try to do this on the first try here. You just very carefully. I'm wearing safety glasses too. Just snip off the end. And dump out the mercury. Now I'm not gonna put this glass vial into the trash either. I'll dispose of that differently. Okay, there it is. I'll just take out the glass there so we can get a uh, proper measurement. Okay, almost cleaned up there. Yeah, I've always been fascinated by mercury. It's one of those things that the uh, powers at, at B would tell you it's the most dangerous element on the earth, but it really isn't. I mean, we used to play with this stuff when we were kids. You do have to be a little bit careful, though. You don't want to breathe the vapors in. You don't want to uh, dump it into the soil and contaminate the ground. But it has a lot of useful properties, one of which being in a thermostat. It is conductive. Um, things I know, it, uh, it, it does freeze. It becomes solid at minus 39 degrees Celsius. But a, boi a boiling point of mercury is uh, 357 degrees Celsius. And uh, it's kind of neat because it's just one of those metals that stays liquid at room temperature. And there's lots of uh, industrial uses for this. One of the things I'm going to use it for in the future on a video, like I said, is uh, it um, gold will dissolve into it or not dissolve it'll it'll make an amalgam so basically an amalgam is two metals that get along very well together and it's uh one of those things that your fillings old fillings from the 80s might be could be a mercury amalgam and in some countries around the world uh, they actually still use mercury to recover fine gold and then they retort the gold out by uh, fire so they obviously the that's evaporating the mercury past its uh, evaporation point. So yeah, that's, um, I'm just going to weigh this up just because I'm just curious to see what they put in this for weight. It's actually a fairly dense material. It's, I can just feel it bouncing around this boat here. It's just, uh, it's just a fascinating metal to, to look at and it's kind of neat, like the blob. All right, ready to weigh it up. Put an empty one on here, tear it out. Two 
2.93 grams. That's not too bad. I wish I got that much gold every time I went out. Okay, well, I'm, I'm curious to see how much is uh, in one of these big boys here. Looks to be it. Considerably more than the, the small thermostats. Point seven one, tear it out. Just be a little bit careful. I don't want this in my rug. Nine point eight six grams. So that's how much is in there. Kind of interesting stuff. Time to put it all in the vial. Sounds like you're pouring juice when you're poured into the vial. There, all is one. It's like the Terminator. Shake it all up. Yeah, cool stuff. All right, guys. Well, we will see you in the next video. Like I said, uh, stay tuned because we're going to do some neat stuff with this. I actually got some uh, gold leaf and we're going to dissolve some gold leaf using just the tiniest bit of mercury. We'll make ourselves some mercury uh, amalgam. Hey guys, do me a favor, smash that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Thanks.